the topic is wave reflection at discontinuities in transmission line when two dissimilar transmission lines are connected together there creates a boundary and at this boundary the incident wave is reflected back this is called a discontinuity at the boundary between two transmission line that are dissimilar so here we talk about the voltage and current boundary conditions that satisfies the transmission line we also discuss the condition to achieve a no reflection wave which means that all the transmitted power reaches to the destination so here we consider a transmission line having a characteristic impedance z0 and at the boundary there is a discontinuity which means that the incident voltage is reflected back to the source side and here we consider a transmission line in which the voltage wave reflected from some complex load impedance so here we consider a transmission line having a characteristic impedance z0 and at the interface at the discontinuity there is a complex load impedance due to this complex load impedance the incident voltage is reflected back so we can say that the transmission line of characteristic impedance z0 is terminated by a load having complex impedance z suffix l we consider that the complex load impedance is at z equals to 0 because we consider that the wave propagate towards z direction so here the complex load impedance is at z equals to 0 so the transmission line occupy a region that is z less than 0 here the reason that is z less than 0 is a transmission line of characteristic impedance z0 so here we consider load at z equals to 0 and at this complex load impedance the incident voltage is reflected back so incident voltage is denoted by v suffix i and reflected voltage is denoted by v suffix r both the incident voltage and reflected voltage is a function of z that is position so the incident voltage wave is equals to v not i e to power minus gamma z and we know that the gamma is a propagation constant and its value is alpha plus j beta so incident voltage wave is v not i e to power minus alpha z into e to power minus j beta z similarly the reflected voltage wave is is equals to v not r e to power gamma z and it is equals to v not r e to power plus alpha z into e to power plus j beta z so these two equations are the phasor form of the voltage wave now we consider a phasor voltage of the load that is at z equals to 0 the phasor voltage of the load is denoted by v suffix l and it is the summation of the incident voltage amplitude and reflected voltage amplitude so vl equals to v not i plus v not r similarly the current through the load is denoted by i suffix l and it is also the summation of incident current amplitude and reflected current amplitude after getting the load voltage and current voltage we can define the load impedance the load impedance is denoted by z suffix l and it is the ratio of the load voltage and load current so zl equals to v not i plus v not r upon i not i plus i not r and in terms of load current it is equals to 1 upon zl into v not i plus v not r so this is about the load impedance that is denoted by z suffix l and we know that there is a characteristic impedance of the transmission line which is denoted by z suffix not so according to the characteristic impedance z not it is a ratio of the voltage amplitude and current amplitude and in case of incident voltage and current amplitude it is v not i upon i not i so the incident current amplitude in terms of characteristic impedance is denoted by v not i upon z not 
and we know that in a transmission line the incident current amplitude is of positive polarity and reflected current amplitude is of negative polarity so reflected current amplitude is equals to minus reflected voltage amplitude upon z not and we know that the load current is equals to summation of incident current amplitude and reflected current amplitude that is i not i plus i not r so in terms of characteristic impedance the load current il is equals to 1 upon z not into v not i minus v not r so with the help of these equation we can write the characteristic impedance z not that is equals to v not i minus v not r upon i not i plus i not r here v not i is the incident voltage amplitude and v not r is the reflected voltage amplitude similarly i not i is the incident current amplitude and i not r is the reflected current amplitude now we equate the load current in terms of characteristic impedance and load impedance so after arrangement we equate in terms of incident voltage amplitude and reflected voltage amplitude so after taking the ratio that is the reflected voltage amplitude upon incident voltage amplitude it is equals to zl minus z0 upon zl plus z0 here zl is the load impedance and z0 is the characteristic impedance so this ratio that is the ratio of the reflected voltage amplitude and the incident voltage amplitude is called a reflection coefficient and this reflection coefficient is denoted by tau since the load impedance and the characteristic impedance is a complex quantity so we can say that the reflection coefficient tau is also complex one so the reflection coefficient tau has a magnitude and phase magnitude is denoted by mod of tau and the phase is denoted by phi suffix r that is called the reflected phase shift so the reflection coefficient tau is the ratio of the reflected voltage amplitude and the incident voltage amplitude so by using this we can write the load voltage in terms of the reflection coefficient which is equals to v not i plus tau v not i here we write v not r is equals to tau of v not i here incident voltage amplitude is taken as a common so the load voltage is equals to 1 plus tau into v not i next is the transmission coefficient the transmission coefficient is also denoted by tau but it, this is called a small tau in case of reflection coefficient is it is a capital tau and in case of transmission coefficient it is a small tau so the transmission coefficient is the ratio of the load voltage amplitude upon incident voltage amplitude this can be obtained from the above equation here the load voltage is equals to 1 plus tau v not i so here we take a ratio that is vl upon v not i and this is called a transmission coefficient so the transmission coefficient is equals to 1 plus reflection coefficient and we know that the reflection coefficient is equals to zl minus z0 upon zl plus z0 so after putting this value we get a transmission coefficient that is a small tau equals to 2 zl upon zl plus z0 as the reflection coefficient is a complex quantity similarly the transmission coefficient has a magnitude and phase the phase of the transmission coefficient is denoted by mod of tau and the phase is denoted by phi suffix t so this is about the reflection coefficient and the transmission coefficient the reflection coefficient is the ratio of the reflected voltage amplitude upon incident voltage amplitude while the transmission coefficient is the ratio of the load voltage amplitude and incident voltage amplitude next objective is to determine the conditions to achieve no reflection means all the power is transmitted to the receiver side to achieve the condition for no reflection 
the value of the reflection coefficient should be zero. And we know that the reflection coefficient is the ratio of Z L minus Z zero upon Z L plus Z zero. To make the reflection coefficient tau equals to zero, that is the capital tau equals to zero, we put Z L equals to Z zero in the numerator. So after putting Z L equals to Z zero, we get a reflection coefficient zero, which means that to get no reflection condition. we make the load impedance and line impedance equal which means that the load is matched to the transmission line or vice versa